Hello and welcome to my introduction to Impact.js. This is going to be a quick presentation that just goes over the basics of Impact, some of the files you'll find in the library, and also what you'll need in order to run an Impact game. Impact.js is a JavaScript game framework. Uh, Impact takes advantage of the modern browser's canvas elements in order to create high-performance 2D games on the web and even mobile. The only barrier of entry when it comes to Impact.js is paying for a license. So there is a license fee for the software since it's not open source. The software is $100, and after purchasing the license, you get the full source code, Weltmeister, which is the level editor, and free updates until the next major version. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Impact, there's some links that you can follow. The main site for Impact is at impactjs.com. There's a very active forum out there to help you uh, with any of your questions or if you find bugs and also to learn more about upcoming releases of the framework. And then there is a demos page in the forum, which other people have posted uh, their games that they're working on. So you can see examples of what's going on in the community. If you're interested in purchasing the framework, of course, you can go to impactjs.com and either click the buy button or just go directly to the buy dash impact page. Running Impact is actually really easy. Um, there's a few things you need before you get started, though. The first is going to be an IDE of some sort. So Impact uh, has no IDE dependencies. You can create your uh, games with any simple text editor. I use WebStorm by JetBrains, which has code hinting, project management, refactoring, and debugging, and it's a really good IDE. Or you can use a very, very basic text editor. You're also going to need Apache for locally hosting or testing your game. You can also use um, another type of uh, HTTP server. Uh, out of the box, you're going to need PHP in order to save the levels created by the level editor. Uh, this can be changed, and I'll talk a little bit about other hosting solutions and how to save out to different languages. And then browsers. Um, Impact works very well on WebKit browsers, especially Chrome, but any modern browser with support for Canvas should work as well. So there's other hosting options for Impact. Um, if you're interested in using Node.js, Connor Petzold made a Node.js module that allows Impact to run on a Node HTTP server. Uh, you can find that on his GitHub page. There is a .NET backend, so you can run Impact on IIS and .NET, thanks to Mike Hamilton's Impact.js IIS.NET API project, uh, which is on Google Code. And there is a Ruby uh, backend as well. So Chris Darich put together a uh, Sinatra backend for Impact. So in order to get that up and running, you just remove the .php extensions from the API calls in the level editor's config file, and you can fire up impact.rb. Um, and you can find that code as well on GitHub. So now that we've talked about what we need in order to run Impact, let's talk really briefly about setting up Impact. Luckily, it's incredibly easy. Once you purchase a copy of Impact, you're going to get a uh, default game file that this becomes your template for starting any new project. Just copy that folder over to your uh, server and then go to that directory in the URL on your localhost and your game should work. And you'll know that it works when you see it works printed on the screen. Uh, that's all that you need to do in order to get a game up and running. It actually takes two seconds worth of work. So if you were to look inside of that directory, you're going to see a few folders and some files. Uh, the main file, of course, is going to be the index.html. This is your main HTML file that runs your game. It will have your CSS for the page layout. It will have a, element, uh, a Canvas element that your game will run in. And then it also has the import statements for the JavaScript that's needed to run your game. There's a lib directory. Uh, this, is the, this is where the core code of Impact.js is and where you'll store your own game code specific uh, to the, your game. This also contains the source code for Weltmeister, which is the level editor. There's a media directory. This is where your assets go and all your game art goes. There's a tools directory. Uh, this contains a PHP script to compress and obscure your game. So part of the license uh, is, is that you don't actually distribute the source code and in order to distribute a game you have to do something called baking the game and you run this PHP script and it'll take all the JavaScript files that make up your game put them into a single JavaScript file for you and then you can use that to distribute your game and then finally there's the Weltmeister HTML page and this is the level editor for 
you'll use for your game. So let's talk about Impact itself and how the core of the game engine works. And we'll start that by talking about modules. So since JavaScript itself doesn't have an include function that can load other JavaScript source files uh, into an object, Impact has its own system. So this is the basic structure of what a module looks like in Impact.js. As you can see, uh, we define the name of the module itself in the first block. So we do ig.module and then we give it a string name. The next block, we define required JavaScript files. So the way that this works is there is an impact directory and your own custom game directory. So anything that you need to load up, and I'll talk a little bit about other required files in the game framework, you just put into this requires uh, block here, and then impact will automatically load all the game files. Impact actually doesn't run your game until everything is loaded, including sounds. So this required block is very helpful for making sure that everything is loaded correctly. Then there's the defines block. This is the uh, last block in a module, and this is where all the code for your uh, module is going to go. So one of the uh, interesting things about impact is that it has uh, classes. Um, so if you're used to, you know, doing any JavaScript development, you may know, you know, there's several different ways of doing classes. So impact has a pretty straightforward way of handling its own class files. Uh, it's based on John Resig's simple Java inheritance code, um, and it extends this with deeper copying of properties and static instantiation. So when it comes to creating a class, this is the general structure of what a class looks like. As you can see here, we have a person class, and we're going to build off of the base class. IG is the uh, namespace for impact, so it's impact game. And then there is a default class that's part of the uh, IG namespace. And we simply extend from that class. And as you see, we can give our own class a name, and we can also give it a function. So name is a simple property. You can add as many properties as you want. And then the init, of course, is going to be our um, any of our functions that we need on our class. So it's important to note that init is the constructor. So init automatically gets called when a class gets instantiated, and you can pass it in arguments uh, to its constructor. Since name is a property of the class, it's going to use this for its scope. So in order to pass that name property from init, to the name property of the class, we're going to have to use this.name equals name. So it's fairly straightforward to create a new instance of your class. All we do is set up a variable. In this case, we have E. Uh, we create a new person, and we pass it in the string generic person. If we were to look at the value of the instance's name property, we would get back generic person. So. As we just saw, it's uh, it's very easy to extend off of the base classes. So let's talk a little bit more about extending classes in Impact. So if we wanted to create another class and we wanted to extend off of the class that we created, we can use the extend um, functionality. So as you see now, we're going to create a ninja. And we have our original person class. We're going to call extend on that. And from there, we're going to create our own init function. So it's important to note that this, since this init function also exists on our person, this is going to override that method. If you're familiar with any other type of class-based programming like Java or ActionScript, this is all going to look pretty familiar to you. One thing to note, though, is that if you want to call the parent method, let's say you want to call persons in it, you can use the this.parent and pass up values to that. So in this case, we're going to pass up the word ninja with name. So if we were to create a new ninja class right now using var p, uh, we'll create a new ninja and we'll pass in the name John Resing. Uh, if we look at the value of the name property, you're going to see that ninja is going to be appended as a prefix to it since we are passing it up to its parent. So as you can see, extending other classes is pretty easy to do. And because of the way that impact is set up, you're going to be able to save yourself a lot of time by being able to reuse code and making new classes that modify just a few pieces of functionality that you need. So now let's talk about Impact's core classes. So I talked earlier about the IG object. 
So each of the core classes are, are namespaced to the IG property. So IG represents uh, the main module, and uh, this is what handles loading of all the other files as well as some utility functions for the game. IG.animation is the main animation class. So this handles animating anything from entities to background map tiles. So frames from an animation sheet, it's an image with all the animations on it. There are drawn as specified by the animation frame time and sequence. Animation sheet is a thin wrapper around the image object. Uh, it specifies the width and height properties for each animation frame in the sheet. It's used by the IG animation class. And this is similar to a sprite sheet if you're familiar with that. IG background map draws tiles from a tile set as indicated by its 2D data array. So in this case, when we create our maps from the level editor, it's going to generate an, an array for us. And then that array is fed to the background map so that we know how to render out each of the tiles. IG collision, this takes a 2D tile map and allows tracing against it for collision. So in Weltmeister, when you set up levels, you also set up collision areas. So this is marking whether something is solid or not, or whether the player or other bad guys can walk through a particular tile. And then this data is passed to the collision map. Entity. So an impact, uh, an entity is any interactive object that the game world would actually display on the screen. So everything that you're going to create from your enemies to your bad guys to things in the environment is going to be subclassed from this entity class. And it also provides all your basic animation, drawing, and physics. There's a font class that loads a specially formatted font image and allows you to draw text with it. So all the fonts in Impact are pixel fonts. The IG game class is the main hub for your game. It hosts all your current act active entities, background maps, and collision maps. Uh, and you can subclass this to create your own game class and it allows you to add custom functionality to the main game itself. There is the image class, which is a wrapper around an image resource, uh, such as a PNG, a GIF, or a JPEG. It takes care of loading and scaling the source image for you. Uh, you can draw the whole image by calling draw, or just one tile of it by calling draw tile. And of course, you can define what a tile size is on it as well. There is an input class that handles keyboard and mouse input. On mobile, it also will manage touch events for any touchscreen device you're playing your game on. There is a loader class. Uh, so the loader is uh, the default preloader for all images, sounds that the game is going to need. By default, it displays a white progress bar and a black background. So again, this is the, uh, the main preloader for your game. And once your game is fully loaded, all of your assets are in memory and everything is ready to go, the loader will disappear and go into your actual game. There is a map class, so this is the base class for the background map and for the collision map, and it provides basic access to the tiles in the map data. There is a music class, which offers capability to play a list of background music in order or randomly. There is a sound class that represents a single sound file to be used as background music or in-game sound. And then there's a sound manager that takes care of loading all the sounds and providing them for the music and sound instances. Uh, an instance of the sound manager is automatically created by the main function in, in, in your game class. There's a system class which takes care of starting and stopping the run loop and calls the run method on the current game object. It also does the housekeeping for input and provides some utility methods. Then there is a timer class, uh, which has two distinct modes of operation. You can either get the difference by calling delta between the current time and the timer's target time, or just call the current tick, the, which is the time since the last call to the tick. This allows you to synchronize events in your game so that you're doing time-based uh, synchronization versus frame-based synchronization. And this is the last class in Impact. It's a very small framework. Uh, which is really good because it helps get everything out of the way for you and you can go right into making your game.